Now here's a classic song if there ever was one. I'm going to show you how you can strum through Ring of Fire with a nice boom chick pattern. And we might as well learn the great horn riff that kicks off the tune. Let's start with that great intro riff. Of course, we're imitating some beautiful horns that are acting in harmony. Let's learn it as a single note melody first, and then we'll learn a harmonized version. Uh, downs and ups are important, and fingering is important, even for this easy version I'm about to show you. Okay, my index finger is playing all the first fret notes, my middle is playing the second fret note, and my ring finger is playing the third fret note. Check out the, uh, the downs and ups. All down strokes at first. Now, down, up, up, down, 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 down. And the second half, down, down, up, up, down, 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 down. Okay, those downs and ups are going to be uh, used in the exact same order and everything for this next part, the harmonized part. What I want to tell you about the left hand for the harmonized part here is it's important to keep your first finger, your index finger, on the first string the whole time. No matter what else is happening, your first string, finger is going to stay on that string the whole time. Okay, so there are only two possible grips you're going to have here, index and middle on the next string, the second string one fret higher, or index and ring on the second string two frets higher. Okay, those are the only two possibilities. 7 and 8, not surprisingly, it's going to be your index and middle. Okay, so check this out in slow motion. And then down, up, up, down. There's the first half. Back to the 7, 8, down, down, up. Down, up, up, down. And you end up back where you start on the 7 and 8. Okay, so now let's get into strumming through the tune. So for your left hand, you'll need G, middle ring and pinky, C, and D. For your right hand, you'll be doing some boom chick strumming where you hit a very specific bass note and then do a nice light down stroke on three or four treble strings, okay? The bass note that you're gonna hit for G is the sixth string note. That's the note G right there. For C, it's the fifth string, because that's the note C, and for D, it's the open fourth string the D note. Makes sense? We hit the root note first. So every time you see a chord name, you're going to do a boom chick on that chord. Now, one last little detail. Johnny Cash makes room for that horn lick to come back in after he finishes each line. Uh, so I'm going to teach it to you the exact way he does it on the recording. If you're playing this without the recording, just for your own pleasure, and you don't have a horn section hanging out with you, you don't have to do quite as many strums. You'll see what I mean in a second. So here comes the first verse. One, two, here we go. So it's very straightforward, we're just talking about whether or not to include all those extra strums where you heard me count one, two, three, right? That's all. Uh, so easy, right? Of course you can pick up the speed, take it as fast as you want to, right? But make sure you get that nice clarity of the single bass note and the nice soft light downstroke. Before we get into the chorus, I want to say thanks as always for watching this video and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my website down there, song bike for lots of videos you cannot find on YouTube. Okay, now let's get to the chorus. Notice that the first uh, chord sequence here in the chorus, it happens twice, right? That D, C, G chord sequence. So grab your D chord, a one, two, ready, go. I
there you have it, right? Very straightforward. Okay, one last little note. I know I make a big deal practically in every video about fingering G with a middle ring and pinky. And you know why I do that, right? <laughs> Even though we all learn it this way, typically in the beginning, uh, to facilitate a nice change from G to C, okay? And I've had a million students over the years who at first they kind of complain about this G, especially if they've mastered this version, index, middle, and ring. Uh, but with a little practice, you get used to it, and everyone can see the logic there. Even if it's a pain to get good at it at first, there's so many songs. I feel like almost every other video I do involves a C to G chord progression, and that's exactly why, okay? That's why you do that fingering right there. Nothing wrong with this fingering. Sometimes it's the exact right thing to do. Or some of you might know a four-finger G fingering with a ring and pinky or there on the first two treble strings, third fret. Nothing wrong with that either. It's a nice uh, jangly kind of sound. But anytime you have G and C in sequence with each other, middle ring and pinky makes a huge difference. Okay? All right, everybody. Well, that was quick, huh? Another song under your belt. Thank you, as usual, for watching. I'll see you for another classic song tomorrow.